one evening when I was at home making dinner and the opening song for Guys and Dolls got in my head out of nowhere, but it's a catchy tune. And I just found myself wondering what else Frank Lesser had written. I looked him up and on his Wikipedia page, there's about a sentence that says, then he went and joined the army and wrote this musical called High Yank for the army. So I just found myself wondering what that show was. No, they got no time for glory in the infantry. No, they got no use for praises loudly sung. But in every soldier's heart, in all the infantry, lives the story of Private Roger Young. Tom himself contacted Army Entertainment and got a note back from Army Entertainment uh, last February letting him know that Army Entertainment functionally wasn't doing theater or music and theater anymore. I, as director of Army Entertainment, had no idea it was in our military entertainment DNA at all. So I was fascinated. It was, you know, Frank Lesser's part of our DNA, private Frank Lesser. How did we not know that? But when Tom Ridgely, our artistic director of Waterwell, found that these um, uh, musicals even existed, it took some digging of libraries across the country to be like, no, if you look in that box, dig deep in there, there is one of these uh, original blueprints. We were able to find these musicals from one of the greatest American musical writers ever. What we found was what the Army called a blueprint special a kind of complete do-it-yourself theater kit. So it was this very thick book, document, that had the score, the complete orchestrations for 15-piece jazz bands, as well as designs for costume and scenery and suggestions for how to construct those things out of materials that soldiers you know, might conceivably have at hand. These musicals that were commissioned by the U.S. Army in 1944 included works uh, by Frank Lesser, by Arnold Orbach, by um, even Jose Limon, a, a towering figure in modern dance history. Everyone at Waterwell decided that it was the best thing to do to find them and uh, put them together and, and, and find a way to give them a voice here in New York City. And the best way to do that was to get these uh, uh, lost musicals on this aircraft carrier uh, called the Intrepid. We knew we were doing it in a museum, uh, so we knew the sort of historicity of the piece would be what was cool about it, that going through a time machine, that you'd be seeing something like what the soldiers would have seen all those years ago. All is ready, so just hold steady, we must be going to the pier. No more waiting or hesitating, the time to sail is here. Bye-bye mothers and all the others who come to shed a little tear. Don't cry. So the Blueprint Specials was created to boost the morale of the soldiers. The shows were put together and they were presented in bases in near New York, and then they were packaged up as blueprints. The soldiers themselves would put them on for their fellow soldiers. A lot of the material is um, admittedly a little subversive. I would say that the first day of casting was when I thought that this was going to be a really special experience. You know, we'd cast a few actors ahead of time, and we were seeing a combination of civilians and military people. The military people, a lot of, most of them veterans, we'd found through an organization called CAMO that Victor runs. And, and Victor was there in the room with us, and he just was able to instantly connect with these people on a level that you know none of the rest of us could because they had this sort of shared history and shared understanding. 
During World War II, it was the first time in history that uh, women became involved uh, serving in the Women's Army Corps. I play a Greek goddess um, named Pallas Athene, who was the goddess of strength and war. She decides she wants to leave Olympus to head down to Earth to join the Women's Army Corps in World War II. If you want your Sunday crown, it's out being reblocked. I'll write you my address. Goodbye. Wait a minute, you can't do this. No. No, I forbid it. <laughs> Remember, I, I am still king of the gods. Roll thunder. <laughs> Flash lightning. I play the part of Jupiter, the uh, Roman god. Uh, I'm married to Pallas, and uh, Pallas takes an interest in the military, and she decides that life with me is just far too boring and redundant, and uh, we have a little fight, and she decides she's gonna go enlist in the WAC, the Women's Army Corps. Typically, as actors, we, we kind of, you know, we're in our theatrical creative bubble, and we work with a lot of the same people, and we go through the same process, but um, working with the vets, uh, you know, they're, they're not, uh, necessarily professional actors, and um, just having exposure to, to, to people um, who were mysterious to me in the past has been really enlightening. I had a certain sense of, uh, you know, what military people in general might be like. I think this show is really important because I think sometimes People who aren't a part of the military, they have specific ideas of what people are like. We have dreams, we have hopes, we want to be open about our experiences, and I think it's really important to be accessible. But when I was reading the play, there was still that sense of community amongst the women who were in the Women's Army Corps in the script. And the, th and the same thing took place when I was in boot camp. There is this sense of community because you're learning how to work together. So for me, that was what was resonating um, as far as my experience in the military and as far as what was in the script. It's a miraculous thing that's happened. World War II was um, often called the last great war, uh, also one of the most brutal wars. Um, and uh, in 1944, the U.S. War Department thought it was important to have um, uh, musicals written by privates to be performed by soldiers uh, during battle, on their off time. Um, the reason they did that was to boost morale. So if you think about it, in 1944, the U.S. War Department thought it was important to, to have musical theater uh, as a form of art therapy uh, for people living in, in, uh, in some of the most dire situations. So the Blueprint Specials are, are soldier shows, and that's a tradition that goes back all the way to World War I and Irving Berlin. And that's just an official capacity as far as the U.S. Army is concerned, but as long as people have been fighting wars, soldiers have been entertaining themselves in one way or another. <laughs> it's clearly something that is necessary for them to cope with the stresses of being away from home, being in obviously an incredibly uh, unstable, uh, often violent environment. And there's something about the community or the escape or the just act of creation that entertainment and culture and art provide that, that nothing else really can. Army Entertainment, uh, as of January 5th, um, functionally ceased to exist. And so the funding for programs for the Soldier Show, for any sort of talent competition, anything to do with, with entertainment by the soldier, for the soldier, or for the, for the families, was actually defunded. As a soldier myself, and as a veteran, who benefited during the late 1980s and early 90s when 
programs existed uh, in a huge way. I mean, on Fort Hood, Texas, um, we had theater programs. I was in Camelot and Carousel and big musicals and all of us were artillerymen and infantrymen. And these sort of programs made those of us that were artistic, but also, you know, brave military service members, it made us whole. Slowly since that time, these, uh, these, these different programs have been losing value amongst the leadership of the military, uh, particularly the theater program. What theater does is it pulls you away from, from where you are in your situation um, in a way that, that anything else can't because it puts you in somebody else's shoes. It puts you in another location in, in a way that if you really respect your craft, will pull you out completely. And it's called getting into character. And getting into character pulls you out of being a soldier just for a moment. What I think that our nation can learn from theater is um, how to put themselves in other people's shoes. Whether it be a military character or a minority character or any character can actually change your perspective. It's just been amazing. Um, and such, such a gift to us to get to be working with them and hearing their stories. They've all been very open and I think it's been kind of healing I would, I would hope for uh, the servicemen and women to be involved in something like this where they're getting to share their experiences through art. While I was in the military, I never saw a show like this. While I was in Iraq from April 03 to 04, there were boxing matches. Because when we do our jobs, we have a, a certain duty. And, and I believe that when we're doing our jobs, we have to be focused. We have to put on the mask of being strong, of showing strength. And once we're done with our jobs, we have to have some type of way to let go. It's become something that, you know, on paper seems frivolous. Who needs troops singing and dancing? They miss the point that it's troops singing and dancing in a way that communicates to other troops, to other contemporaries. Anything can happen to a sad sad. The army's the luckiest guy. A sad sad is a sad sad and a sad sad. Never can understand why. I wouldn't care what happens to a sad sad. No worry if he should feel blue. I'm passionate about this piece because even though this was 70 years ago, um, I can see myself in the situations. I, in my unit, there was a sad sack that I was in charge of, that I loved and took care of and helped get through the military. Uh, we see ourselves and our colleagues in every single one of these characters, even though it was 70 years ago. The passion and the mission of a soldier never changes, and we will always recognize ourselves in these works. What did you do as a civilian? Danced. What would you like to do in the Army? Dance. Forward! March! Part of this was to figure out what can we do to bridge the gap, or, or call attention to the fact that this is important, um, that it does have value and that it ought to be preserved. This uh, divided country that we live in right now needs more opportunities to see both sides of the equation, um, to see what it seems to, for civilians to see military life, for military life to see civilian life, and see what it means to, uh, uh, to have a cohesion art form that uh, can really uh, express uh, America and patriotism in, in a way that hasn't been seen in a very long time. It was a neat uh, bridge between the sort of two worlds of this project. All great civilizations are remembered for their wars and for their art. And which one do you want to be remembered for?